In this video, I will be talking about Ian Bannon, my favourite ever Scottish actor. Ian Bannon was born in Airdrie in 1928 and he died in 1999 in a car crash near Loch Ness. He appeared on stage, in films and on TV. He was well respected within the industry. He received uh, an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his performance in The Flight of the Phoenix. He received nominations uh, for BAFTA Best Supporting Actor for his appearances in uh, The Offence and for Hope and Glory. Towards the end of his life he received a BAFTA Lifetime Achievement Award. Over the years he appeared in many uh, famous films, uh, several box office successes and several critical successes. Films like, uh, um, for example, uh, Gandhi, Gorky Park, The Hill. Um, the Hill is uh, uh, a very good film, I think. Um, didn't do well at the box office, but uh, um, very gritty. Set in a sort of army, army prison camp uh, with a host of other great actors as well. Um, Gorky Park, as say it's a political thriller with uh, William Hurt and Lee Marvin. Gandhi of course was the host of uh, uh, big stars as well. He appeared in, in that in a small role. Hope and Glory, John Boorman film, uh, he appeared in that and he also appeared in Braveheart as uh, Robert the Bruce's father. Um, who was a leper, so he appeared uh, <laughs> made up as a leper. Uh, horrible looking really, but uh, he appeared in that film. Um, he was usually a supporting actor. He was a very good character actor. Um, only occasionally was he a leading man. Uh, one such film he was a leading man in was Doomwatch, uh, in which uh, he appeared with Judy Jason. Um, this was based on a BBC TV series at the time, uh, also called Doomwatch. Uh, it was a science fiction uh, thing. Uh, it was a good idea to transfer it to the, the big screen, but the film itself wasn't terribly exciting. I think it made a mistake in, in moving from sci-fi to horror. It became more of a horror film and it didn't quite uh, work in my opinion. But that was a, an example of a film in which he was the leading man. Um, he was offered uh, the leading man role in a film called Sunday Bloody Sunday and he, he took it up and he shot a few scenes but he was very uncomfortable filming uh, those scenes. He was playing the part of a homosexual doctor and it, it didn't seem as, as if he was uh, particularly happy in that, park and, in that part and the director actually fired him because he didn't think he was good enough. Peter Finch took over the role and uh, the film was actually a big success. And Ian Bannon looked back at the, uh, towards the end of his life at, at that uh, uh, film and thought that uh, he, uh, his career might have uh, uh, gone in a better direction if uh, he'd actually stuck with that film. And uh, who knows, he might have uh, moved into the leading man uh, category if he'd uh, stayed with that film. 
But uh, he was very good in supporting roles, very good as the, the characters he appeared as. He was also in uh, several TV miniseries like Tinker Tail the Soldier Spy and Dr. Finlay in the 1990s. Now, this Dr. Finlay was a, a sort of remake of uh, the original 1960s series, Dr. Finlay's Casebook. And uh, strangely enough, Ian Bannon, uh, as a younger actor, had been offered the role of Dr. Finlay in the original series, but he turned it down. Um, kind of ironic that, it, uh, but uh, I guess this happens with actors, you know, the, the, a script will uh, end up on their desk and they'll have a read through and they won't like it for some reason, don't want to do it. They turn it down and the whole thing ends up being a huge <laughs> popular success. Uh, I don't know if he regretted it or not, but uh, he eventually played uh, Dr. Cameron in the, in the remake in the 90s. Um, he was also in a couple of uh, TV movies uh, at uh, in The Gathering Storm was one in which he played uh, Adolf Hitler. Richard Burton was uh, was playing Winston Churchill and uh, the role of Hitler in that uh, TV movie is, is relatively small but nevertheless uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting performance. I always think an actor's life is not complete until he has actually played Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Uh, the other um, TV film he was in was, uh, was a series actually, Jesus of Nazareth, in the, in the 70s. Uh, big popular TV series, Robert Powell as Jesus. Uh, Ian Bannon had a very small role as a character called Amos, who doesn't actually appear in the Bible. He's a, an invented character, uh, just for the sake of the series. Um, but... I want to concentrate on three performances that I think um, show Ian Bannon at his very best. Uh, the three films I want to look at are Station 6 Sahara, The Flight of the Phoenix and The Offence. Now Station 6 Sahara, in this film he plays a, a Scot called Fletcher. Now Fletcher, he's a He's a crude, horrible uh, <laughs> kind of character. Um, uh, he's one of uh, several guys who are stuck in the middle of the Sahara Desert who all work on this oil pumping um, pipeline station. Um, and they get, oh, you know, they get all, all get on each other's nerves and uh, it's tense like that. And the first half of the film is all about them interacting with each other and uh, Ian Bannon has some great scenes with Denham Elliott, uh, another great character actor. Um, Ian Bannon's character, uh, he never gets any mail, he never gets any letters from anybody, but Denham Elliott gets loads of letters and uh, Ian Bannon is uh, very envious of this and uh, he offers to buy one of uh, Denham Elliott's letters for a month's salary and of course Denham Elliott agrees to this and uh, Ian Bannon chooses one of his letters at one point uh, very carefully and uh, then uh, ever after uh, Denham Elliott is very anxious to know what was in that letter because he thinks it might have been very important uh, but Ian Bannon won't tell him and uh, they have some great scenes together. Um, the film itself is uh, bit of an oddity. Uh, it's kind of an implausible plot. I mean, uh, halfway through the film, um, Carol Baker, this blonde bombshell, arrives in this station. Of course, uh, uh, disrupts the whole atmosphere of the place, you know, sits around sunbathing, of course, and distracting all these guys and uh, causing even more tension. <laughs> So it's kind of a, a strange film, but very tense, very suspenseful. It's, uh, 
it's great. And Ian Bannon has got some fantastic lines in it as well. Um, it's a forgotten sort of film now. I mean, uh, most people have probably never heard of it. But I did notice that recently the film director Martin Scorsese came out and said Station 6 Sahara was a fantastic film which he uh, really recommended. And uh, so it's uh, something to uh, look out for, uh, Station 6 Sahara. The second film I want to talk about uh, is uh, The Flight of the Phoenix. Now Ian Bannon plays a not dissimilar character to the one he played in Station 6 Sahara. Again another Scotsman, um, this time a cynical, mocking kind of uh, guy. And again he's got some fantastically you know, funny lines in it as well. Uh, and again, it's, it's another film with a, a bunch of guys in the middle of the desert. Uh, the, the, the story revolves around a, a plane that has to crash land in the middle of the desert. And it's about their attempt to try and uh, rebuild a new plane out of the wreckage of the old. And uh, this is the film that uh, Ian Bannon uh, got a, a, an Oscar nomination for, for Best Supporting Actor. Which is incredible because in this film he's uh, surrounded by fantastic big name actors. Um, James Stewart, Richard Attenborough, Peter Finch, Ernest Borgnine, Hardy Kruger. <laughs> Hardy Kruger's brilliant, I have to admit. Um, Ronald Fraser. Dan Durie, a big star from the American film noir of the of the 1940s. So it was incredible that Ian Bannon stood out amongst all these great actors and, and got this uh, Best Supporting Actor nomination as well. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a very uh, tense film. It's one of these films where you know in the end it's going to all work out for them, you know, but even so it's very, uh, keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's, uh, there are some films that do that. I always uh, think of The Day of the Jackal being uh, very tense. Even though you know the guy must fail, um, it's, it's still very exciting. And, and Flight of the Phoenix is like, like that as well. You know they're, they're all going to uh, be, um, you know, be all right in the end, but uh, you're tense throughout. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really great film. Fantastic film, much better than the remake that was made uh, uh, decades later. Uh, the original is the best one. And the third film I want to talk about uh, that Ian Bannon is fantastic in is The Offence. Um, this is a dark, uh, gritty, psychologically complex film. Uh, stars Ian Bannon and uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery by the way, I think gives his best ever performance in this film, The Offence. Um, and Ian, Ian Bannon is fantastic in it as well. Um, Ian, Ian Bannon plays a character called Kenneth uh, Baxter, uh, who, is, uh, who is suspected of uh, abducting a girl. Um, and he's brought in for questioning and uh, Sean Connery is the policeman who interrogates him. Um, Sean Connery is the uh, policeman is a guy who's uh, at the end of his tether. He's probably seen too many horrible cases and it's beginning to affect him psychologically. And uh, Ian Bannon's character susses this out, um, notices all this and plays upon it. Um, taunts him and the whole film is a sort of psychological battle between the two of them. Um, very, very interesting, very, very complex. Uh, um, John Connery sort of goes over the top of course and uh, ends up um, physically assaulting uh, Ian Bannon um, in the film. Uh, Great film, a fantastic film, and uh, um, 
great performance by Ian Bannon in it as well. And as I say, he got uh, he got a, a BAFTA nomination for Best Supporting Actor for that film. So, those are my uh, three Ian Bannon films that I think uh, are his are his best. And so, uh, if you've never heard of Ian Bannon, check him out. If you if you haven't seen any of the films that I've mentioned, uh, check them out. They're, they're all very good films. So that's it. That's uh, Ian Bannon, my favourite ever Scottish actor.